microphone but since we're recording we're going to do this and I'll try to do the best I can because it does have a little echo can you still hear me yeah. cool. all right so for those of you who don't know me my name is Dr. Rosie uh, Maine and I have been in practice for 20 years now here in this office since 2007 actually the guy that was here that was my husband the dog the white dog and one of my twin boys were out there reading you guys probably um, and so uh, we uh, had an office in Caldwell in 2000 we opened there and then my husband came here um, to open this practice and now he's the stay-at-home dad and homeschools and so uh, he comes in and covers for me sometimes and he was here today so uh, we love this community and uh, enjoy Boise so much I uh, want to just start to uh, tell you that the, the whole focus of these classes, we do a monthly, typically we have different topics. Next topic, we're going to be doing one on heavy metal detoxing. And it's going to be actually phase two of this seminar. Um, it's, the journey is about healing, and so hopefully today your focus is not about weight loss. Because our focus here is not about weight loss. Uh, weight loss is a side effect. The whole goal is um, to make sure you remember that God put a power in our body to heal. And so we try to remind ourselves that that power is greater than any doctor in the world. You have your own doctor in your body. And so um, we found answers, even from my husband, who this was his office. He was very sick at one point, uh, got chronic illness with heavy metals, and that's why I have a heart and passion for that topic. 
Uh, he opened this office after he healed himself. He had quit practice when we were in Caldwell. After maybe four years into practice, he got really depressed, anxious, and irritable, and unfortunately, um, you know, didn't understand why. You know, we were doing all the right things, but he was so toxic from heavy metals. So, long story short, short, we found a solution because first prayer, and number two, he directs our path, right? So, um, he ended up uh, finding that he was toxic from heavy metals. We ended up doing all the stuff and learned in the process too, and now we do a lot of heavy metal detoxing here for our patients as well. So that's why we want to do phase two in September. So we want to talk about first phase one, which is comes from just your own body's ability to heal. And so fasting is not a new thing. And by the way, um, see there's some pictures. Uh, I work with athletes, I work with Olympics um, uh, wrestlers. And so um, I am actually going uh, to uh, the World Championships in September, and my husband's going to cover for a week. That's my patient, so you guys know this guy's not a stranger. His name's on the wall, and he is a chiropractor. So <laughs> he, he covers for me whenever I go. Um, but I also work with uh, Valley, Idaho. I love working with uh, athletes, and, um, you know, they're really awesome. But to tell you the truth, I love working just with people and families and kids. So I love when little kids, like Brianna's little girl today, just pops up on the adjustment table and just gets adjusted. So you may be wondering why I have bikes. So these are just two, but by Christmas, I'm gonna have 100 in here. I don't know where I'm gonna put them, but I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna hang them, I don't know, but that's my dream. I have a goal of uh, each patient that comes in for their new patient, we typically do a $40 evaluation to see what's going on in x-rays. That money is going to go to my bike fund <laughs> that I'm going to raise 100 bikes for kids that want a bike and maybe their parents can't get them a bike. So um, just to let you know why we have a bike up here. So if you actually want to get adjusted or get signed up to see what's going on with their spine, guess what that money is going? It's going to my bike fund. So. That's what that's, that's what that's about. But I do work with a lot of kids in here, and I love it. So, um, so I'm going to start first with the principle. We always talk about the principle every class I do, whether it be um, just a small class with my patients. And the principle is this: with chiropractic, and I think it's most misunderstood as a chiropractor. We understand that the power that made the body heals the body. And that's the principle we teach in every class. And we have to remind our patients, too, why they're here. Because if you're here as a patient, our goal is not to just, of course, sometimes people come for pain, but they understand that the reason we adjust you is not for pain, it's to remove interference to what? The what? Yeah, the nervous system. So the nervous system carries that life supply. And it's basically your brain carries that power. I call it that life that God put in the body that flows through the system to talk to it, to allow your brain to communicate to your body and your body to your brain. So when we adjust you, we're just removing interference to the nerves to allow your same body that made you, that heals you, to function at 100%. So that's the principle. And why we talk about that is fasting does not heal the body. Who heals the body? that made the body heal the body. Fasting is just something we do to honor him to allow that power to do what it should do. Does that make sense? And that's where it's not, in the Bible it says, it's not if you fast, it's when you fast. If you go back, look at it, it's, it's when you do it. So apparently we're supposed to, right? <laughs> But how many of you actually have fasted like a whole day without food? Awesome, five days. Plan. I have some people that have done with my, done with my water fasters, my extended water faster. So there's a lot of people here, more than 10 days water fasting, 20, 30. And that's water fasting. Jesus did it with nothing, you know what I mean, in the desert. So I'm not telling you to do that, but we are, intended to fast and so we want to talk about 
how to do it and how to do it safely and also you know there's people who shouldn't fast i mean i really recommend that you talk to your doctor of course but there's um, things uh, that you need to be aware of too if you're going to do it so with the, these uh, five essentials we teach in our office this is one piece of the puzzle uh, fasting we classify it as essential number five which is removing toxins but I really feel that it, it, it helps in all areas. So the five essentials of max living, which is uh, what we teach in our office, is removing interference number one to the head, that sometimes you get a disease and you've been told you have whatever it is, cancer, diabetes, thyroid issues, Hashimoto's, whatever it is, and you believe it. So as a man thinks so he is, so remove the lie and replace it with truth, and it's the truth. Central number two is the nervous system, making sure that your nervous system is clear. We apparently just talked about that. Central number three is nutrition. So the ketogenic lifestyle, I call it a lifestyle, is kind of something that you would want to implement. Not forever and not all the time, but we're gonna talk about doing it in a ketogenic fashion. Now, as soon as I mention keto, people think like, oh, that's a bad thing. And it's not a fad, guys. This has been around for many years, um, but, there's different ways of doing keto too. You could do it plant-based if you don't like meat, that's fine. The whole goal here is to have more quality fats, okay? And quality vegetables and carbohydrates. Um, so that's where we're gonna talk about. You can do it with meat, you can do it with half and half, whatever you wanna do. But quality nutrients, God food versus man food. So today we gave you a salad, and it was an organic salad. We had olive oil, which is gonna be filled with olive oil, uh, balsamic um, vinegar. You can use the one that's very low in sugar. We're gonna talk about counting your net carbs. And then we're also, we had a healing dressing and actually the healing dressing is in our uh, book so that we give you like as patients here, we give you the line your health and we give you all the, the advanced plan or ketogenic, we call it advanced plan, but it's the same kind of principle, the ketogenic um, plan where we can do that. I actually tell you the truth, I created that healing dressing. Who had that dressing that had a lot of pizzazz to it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry, your breath is gonna stink the rest of the night. But I call it healing dressing and it came out of my Mexiquito book. Actually, BJ Hardick, that wrote the Align Your Health book for the Maximize Living Principles, he came to my house and stayed and had it at my house. And I made this um, dressing, and I said, go ahead, take it, put it in your book, but it's in my Mexiquito. Um, but it's basically lots of olive oil um, and healing nutrients, like God food, like turmeric and garlic and ginger and um, apple cider vinegar and stevia. And that's the, I just gave you the recipe, and it's also um, in your books. We have the Align Your Health books uh, for your patients or, you know, so. So it's, it's it's stuff that, I mean, I, I always post my recipes on my online. You can just go to drmen.com and you're gonna see a gazillion of them on the recipe section on my website. Um, but um, there's so many websites out there. So it's like, just we're gonna show you what to do, but there's so many resources out there, okay? Essential number five is minimizing toxins. And I think this is why we want to start faxing fasting before we do phase two in September. Because you have toxins that, I don't know if you guys know, but the frustration comes when these toxins are in your body. You can digest a carbohydrate, a protein, and a uh, fat, but when your body sees a toxin, it has no idea what it is. So it goes through the liver. The liver kind of says after phase two detox, like I don't know what to do with this. So it puts it back into your body and guess where it hides and fat and so mainly in fat cells in your body and if you're not fat guess where it's going to go in your brain so you get what we call neurotoxicity issues so we're seeing more than ever more new neurodegenerative conditions like multiple sclerosis alzheimer's MS, I mean, well, at multiple sclerosis, you know, depression, all these things in, in kids with the autism and ADD and all these things. And not to mention your lymphatic system, and it also goes in there. So sometimes people will have like really, like I'm adjusting them and everything's so like gnarly, like 
crunchy and, and a lot of scar tissue, very sensitive because they're, they're hiding. These toxins are in your tissues. So I start working with somebody and then they're so sore the next day. And then they're wondering, why am I so sensitive all the time? I hurt more now because your body is getting rid of them. But then you gotta drink water to flush them out. And then hopefully you're also sweating. So hopefully if tonight it's hot in here, that's good because you're actually detoxing when you sweat. So like saunas or being out there in the heat, it's not a bad idea to detox. You want to detox. So, but you got to get these toxins out. But they're not only down within your body, they also see past the blood-brain barrier, which is a barrier that protects your brain. But some toxins like heavy metals and things like that can seep in there. And that's like what my husband got very sick because of heavy metal toxicity. And so there's phase two where we would want to get rid of those kind of toxins as we go further. So it starts with your mind. And my first question for you today, because this is gonna be a challenge, you gotta start with the why before the how. And really simply put, if your why is not big enough, you're gonna probably want to quit. And so your why, and I asked, I started with this whole principle today, it does not start with weight loss. Because if your weight loss is secondary, but if your goal is weight loss, it's still about who? It's, you're pointing this way. It has to be something that points out or up. I would prefer up, but out, whatever. So whether it's for you to live here for the long haul for your family, to be able to roll around with your grandkids outside, whatever it is, but it has to be bigger than you. I want to heal because I want to be able to. As you guys know, my passion comes from this and what I do here. My mom died of diabetes, my sister two years ago with diabetes. So I have this passion to seek and save that which is lost because people don't know the answers. So that's my why. And I anchor to that. And this is where you have to have something that you anchor to. So what do I put in my vision wall? I put a picture of my mom. I refrigerate, I put a picture of my sister. You know, it's like, that stops me from like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to try to do the best I can. Does that make sense? So really quick, just write down your why. It doesn't have to be that long, but at the very top of that thousand page, just write it, you know, so why. It doesn't, this is not a paragraph, just write one word. Mom, kids, God. I don't know, whatever, but it has to be huge. And you don't have to share this, guys, it's not about that. This is for you, this class is for you, and this is about just uh, writing it down so you can remember. Okay, so, um, you know, I always like to talk about the nervous system already. I, I, I say that, you know, you can go, um, you know, month a month without food, that's what we're gonna talk about, fasting, right? You could go maybe days without water, but, What's the most important thing that governs everything? Like if I cut the nerve that goes to the heart, what happens? You die. So the nervous system is key. So it starts with the mind first, but you gotta clear the nervous system. So I can't uh, tell you that these, these kids, I show them because, I don't know if you guys know, with fasting, in the beginning when it began, it was done for seizure, patients. So these two kids here are one of my kids who would have continued seizures. Continued seizures, 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 everyday seizures. They didn't do the ketogenic diet. We adjusted them. And we adjusted them and before you know it, seizures start disappearing or they're less. And so again, what do we clear out? Subluxations in their spine, remove the interference, God doesn't heal. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. It's that simple. So, yes, ketogenic was for seizures, and, and I even put one of these guys here in a ketogenic diet later to try to minimize even more so. But it's a journey, guys, and this is where the more you can implement, but with kids, it's going to be very hard to get them if they've never done a diet without sugar and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not recommending it for kids, period. I do mine on what we call a poor plan, which is more God food versus that, um, God food versus man food. But we still do it with some kids that need to. Which is, and it's very simple. My kids are mainly on a, on a keto, but they still have, you know, like we do sprouted uh, sourdough bread for them that is, you know, has good, um, 
nutrients, but it's, it's, it's done the way God intended to make bread. So there's ways you can make this stuff happen. So, but I love these pictures because again, these pictures anchor me of why I keep searching for people who are lost because they were both drugged up, told that there's no answer, here's these drugs for the rest of your life. And that's a stinking lie. You guys see this? So this is where it all matters. Your mind, your spine, your nutrients, your toxins, and you gotta exercise too, by the way. So, um, so this is an, an adult. And so this guy, I would have never believed that he would have done this. He didn't do it for weight loss. Um, he just started coming in because he had back pain, and all he cared was that he needed to go back to work. He says, I just need to go work. And um, I just kept encouraging him with the, with the process here. Hey, you know what? How about, you know, we just start you on this diet. He's like, okay, whatever. You know, and so he just did it because uh, his family um, supported him and he did it and lost all this uh, weight. You know, it's, but it's great to see this stuff, but this is not why we do this stuff, okay? Um, so now moving into the nutrition. So um, I wanna talk about these verses because I think this is where it starts. This again, this is, Biblically, we find it in many times. If you see the first one here, Jesus told his disciples on one occasion that the reason they could not cast out particular spirits of infirmity was because of their unbelief. And this one took what? This one needed what? Fasting and prayer. I mean, this is all over the Bible. The other one that I love is when Moses came down from the mountain. He had been there for 40 days fasting. I don't know if you guys, when he was told the Ten Commandments to come and tell him to the uh, to his people. And then he came down and it says that Moses himself wrote the commandments on tablets. Oh, wait, but it says God entrusted him with Ten Commandments. Uh, oh, I didn't have that right there. But it said when he came down, he looked like this, he looked like he was just glowing. Glowing, yeah, and so of course Daniel. I mean, I can go on and on. You guys know uh, that all this has been there forever. But watch this. I fast for greater physical and mental efficiency. Plato. I mean, this is eons ago. I love this one, Hippocrates. Everyone has a doctor in him. This is like the power that made the body heal the body. He like knew this. Everyone has a doctor in him. We just have to help it in its work. The natural healing force within each one of us is the greatest force in getting well. The natural force in you is what gets you well. Our food should be our medicine. Our medicine should be our food. I'm sure you guys have heard that. I mean, this is eons ago. And, but to eat, and this, I love this one, but to eat when you are sick is to feed your sickness. Digest that one. To eat when you are sick <laughs> <clears throat> wow, you know, is to feed your sickness. So when we are sick, we try to shove food into our kids or to ourselves. What should we do? What does an animal do? My dog, Ice, when he's sick, he doesn't eat. He doesn't want to eat. What's his body innately doing? Healing. So that's the power of fasting. It's, it's, it, it allows the body to heal. Do you have a question? Yes, yeah, because they say uh, feed cold, serve a feed. <laughs> yeah, and so so now, like broth. I know, like back in the day, if you had a grandma that gave you like chicken chicken broth. Chicken broth. That's beautiful, but just the broth, like the chicken broth. You know, but that's a form of fasting. But you're allowing the body to not digest food, and it gives it the ability to heal. So this is just common sense, guys. Um, so it's just little by little. So people who should not fast, just really quick here, I want to go through this list because there are some times that I think that people should wait. For, for certainly, you're going to be detoxing, so you're letting a lot of toxins out. So if you're like pregnant or a pregnant um, or a breastfeeding mom, I wouldn't consider you fasting because you need nutrients to produce the milk, but also you're going to be excreting a lot of toxins, and so you wouldn't want to do that. Those who are anorexic or bulimic and have some kind of eating disorder, please uh, don't do that. Um, the other one's pregnant, diabetic woman, uh, like if you're pregnant, diabetic, or pregnant, you just shouldn't have it. Nursing moms, those who have severe anemia, and those with extreme um, fear of fasting because it's gonna create more stress. So if you're really in fear, there's other types of fasts that you can do with this challenge. It's called a partial fast, where you just have 
only a certain amount of food. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So, um, so just going to talk about maybe seven of these benefits of fasting, and I'm not going to uh, go through a lot of detail, but I do want to point out why you would want to consider fasting. Number one, it stimulates fat burning. And the way it does that is that when you fast, you're going to burn up all the glycogen stores in your liver, and then your body's going to want to search for another fuel. So it's going to then make what's called a ketone body that is produced in your liver. It's called beta-hydroxybutyrate, and it's basically what feeds your brain. But you have more efficiency in a ketone body for fuel than you do out of sugar. So it actually will help you boost that energy. But I am going to tell you, when you do get on week number five, which we're going to talk about, which you do a five-day water fast, it's going to take about three to four days before you hit that wall and you get that energy, just to let you know, because we'll, we'll talk about each week and what you're going to experience with each week, just to let you know uh, what, what you're going to get into. But uh, the other thing, it improves your energy levels. And like we talked about, so not only are you going to burn fat, but you're going to have more energy. Reduces inflammation. What's known with all the research with fasting is that it decreases inflammation and cytokine production, and that's beautiful. So people who are always like joint pain and they're stiff, they're going to see that they're going to feel better. But I am going to warn you that when you do the extended five-day water fast, if you look at your pages on week five, you're going to do a five-day water fast. You're going to have sometimes people that come to me and say, Doc, I have all this hip pain or back pain or stuff. Guess what the body's doing, and that's why it's creating pain. What's it doing? It's focusing on those areas to what? To heal those areas. So you may experience it, but that's what's called autophagy, which is a word that you're going to hear a lot in the fashion world, which is your body's ability to go and recycle old cells and clean up the debris. But you have this breakdown of tissue, which is called autophagy. And so you're actually mending. You have to break down before you build up. Does that make sense? So it makes sense with our faith. Sometimes we need to be broken to be left. <laughs> Rebuild the temple. You know what I mean? So that's what we're doing, re rebuilding the temple. All right? Number four, take stress off of the digestive system. So when you fast, you're allowing your body to heal the gut lining. So think of it like a uh, lining that's been inflamed or like a cut if you have a scrape and you keep rubbing it and rubbing it, it never heals, right? So when you don't eat for about a couple of hours, or the body starts, but you do an extended fast, it allows that lining to heal and then you start to put the right nutrients to remend the lining of the membrane. And what we're seeing a lot of people today is that people are getting what's called autoimmune diseases, such as Hashimoto's, pancreatic disease like diabetes type one, um, I mean like lupus, uh, eczema, all these autoimmune diseases are typically from a bad gut, from a bad digestive system. So what's happening to our gut is that, and that's why I got into chiropractic by the way, is I had Crohn's. And I was in medical school and, you know, got this, you know, just infection everywhere. I got Crohn's. Anyways, long story short, as a bodybuilder, I lost like 20, 30 pounds in two weeks. And so my dad went to go pick me up from San Antonio and then went to down south. My sister, my cousin was working for a chiropractor. She said, we to go see, um, you know, my chiropractor that I work for. And I'm like, you're crazy. I have gut issues, not back issues. And, he ended up telling me, you know, the power to make the body heals the body. Let's restore your spine. It was from squatting. I, I actually used to squat 405 as a power lifter. Like, well, that, don't do that. But <laughs> that had that to my spine. But then also, I thought I was healthy eating all this good stuff, but yet it was all acidic stuff. I said proteins, protein bars, you know, the things that I thought was healthy. And I looked good outside, but inside I was sick. And so anyways, he started teaching me how to do bone broths, and that's whenever I started to mend my gut and fermented foods and all this kind of stuff. But that's what caused my Crohn's, and that's where you guys understand that if you let the, I did the fasting with the bone broths and all that at that point, and my body mended. So I'm like, what's this chiropractic stuff? I'm gonna go and go do that. And that's where God brings you where you need to go. So the next one is, 
stimulates cellular autophagy. We talked about that, cellular autophagy. It was, it's, it's like your body's like Pac-Man. Like, it goes and chases the old ingredients. So you can allow it to do that. It improves genetic repair me mechanisms. So you have um, telomeres in your DNA, and I'm not gonna get too in-depth with that, but they're like the ends of the, the DNA. And there's been a lot of research with fasting. You actually get stem cell production. So you know how people pay tons of money to go inject it? Your body actually, by day four of the extended fast, your body's gonna produce a bunch of natural stem cells, which these stem cells go and heal specific tissues. So we see that you take, like people in Okinawa, they're called centenarians. They live over 100 years. And why do you think, what's their lifestyle? They're called blue zones. And in these places, they have people who are only probably eating one meal a day because they have to go fish for it. You know what I mean? Then they're active all day, they're getting vitamin D, and like you see this 90-year-old person in the water, and he has all this energy cutting his fish, and the reporter's trying to talk to him, I've seen these documentaries, and the guy, you can't stop him. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's beautiful to watch because they're so energetic. But what they found is that a lot of what they're doing is feast and famine cycles, which we're gonna be talking about that with the feasting, I mean, with the fasting, there's also feasting. There's days when they have a lot, and there's days when they have a little. So there's gonna be times for everything. Okay, so this is what I talked about, the Pac-Man, the green thing is a lysosome, which goes in and breaks up old cells, and then that autophagy part, when you get there, your body is then gonna use those recycled parts to make what? New cells. So that's what your body does. It's so beautiful. Then you put the right nutrients in, your body's rebuilding. So when they say you can renew your mind in Romans, you can renew your work body. You just have to give it the ability to do so. By the way, you look so much younger. <laughs> so these guys, I met them years ago, and they just did the night January. We did a whole um, fasting class, and you guys, how, how many days? We did five. Five, and how was it? You no, lost, you lost weight, right? Yes, I know. How much? About forty to forty-five. Yeah, every time I see you, he he, he comes, you know, with his wife uh, and drags him here. But he <laughs> 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 and so this is very beautiful to watch. So that's autophagy equal equates to longevity. Okay, so that's what that means. You you're just the body is going to start self healing mechanisms ignite in your body. Okay, so that's what that is. Uh, stimulate stem cells, improves insulin sensitivity. I want to talk about this because mm -hmm. this hits close to home with my mom dying of diabetes, my sister of diabetes, and I don't know, um, this is one of those things that I really researched it because genetics are a tendency, but they're not a life sentence. My sister lived with me the last year of her life, um, and at that point, my dad couldn't take care of her. She was mentally ill, but again, long story short, she literally wasted away, um, and at the end, my dad, could, you know, I, I started to need to everything, to bathe her, to change her diaper. Anyways, she went back to live with my dad after I had rebuilt her, and she had gotten off her meds, and everything was doing really good. Unfortunately, my dad, again, he wanted her back, but didn't take care of her, and died uh, like six months after he took her. And so I don't blame my dad. I know my sister had years of problems like that. But that year was very stressful for me because I took a lot to try to, you know, try to run the practice, try to do, you know, it's like a baby. If you, if you carry a 46-year-old woman to the bathroom and you bathe her, that's like a lot of stuff. You know, my husband's not gonna do it. So, but anyways, the thing is, is that it destroyed my body. And so guess what? Genetics are not a tendency, but they're a tendency, not a life sentence. My genetics, they either turn on or they turn off. But you can eat right and exercise and do all the right, I get adjusted, did all the right things, but guess what? My sugar levels were off the roof. I mean, they were in the 400s, and that's not good. So back in 2017, it was a big wake up call. After she died in October, I said, I gotta do something. And that's whenever, in 2018, I really dug in. Well, I first prayed and I said, God, what do I do? I heard fast. And I wasn't doing it for healing. I just I just thought it was a spiritual fasting. So I just did spiritual fasting until December. And then I saw my sugar level drop, like, dramatically. I'm like, 
cool. So then I said, God, if this is what it takes, I'm going to do this. So 2018, each month, I did five-day water fast every month, each month. By the end of that year, I mean, I'm right now, like, maybe my highest it's ever gone because, again, stress when I was selling my house was 220, and that was, like, high for me still, you know. But now it maintains at 150 or whatever, 120, 110 goes up and down. I do a lot of stress, guys, with this office. It's just, it's just a lot on me. But I'm continuously doing what? Working on it. You know what I mean? So but I want you to understand insulin resistance because whether you're diabetic or not, we all are eating lots of carbohydrates. So what's happening with this insulin resistance that they call it, whether you're pre-diabetic or non-diabetic, what's happening is Leptin and insulin are the hormones, like leptin is the hormone that tells your body to burn fat for energy, and insulin is the one that utilizes sugar. We're meant to be what burner? Fat or sugar? Fat. But we burned out leptin years ago because of toxicity and just we eat too much bad fat. So we become sugar cravers. So we're always utilizing sugar, always utilizing insulin. So guess what? The theory was that with diabetes type 2, that we somehow, like if you look at the first diagram, it's that the sugar is a yellow, by the way, little yellow dots, and the cell has normally, it goes into with insulin receptors, the, the sugar goes into the cell to be utilized in the mitochondria for ATP. So the theory and this is, if you look at Dr. Jason Fong's work, uh, Dr. Jason Fong is one of the resources I'm going to point you to to go watch his videos, read his book, I'll show you his book. But this uh, theory, is that music? Oh, okay. So, um, so the, the theory for many years for diabetics is that sugar can't go in because the insulin receptors have burned out. But what Dr. Jason Fong has said, if that's the case, then if people are taking insulin, why are they still getting fat? And you see a lot of people with diabetic, whatever, just like big abdomens, lots of abdominal viscera that has uh, a lot of uh, fat. So what he's basically promoting is that it's an overflow paradigm. It's that we're just always shoving sugar in our bodies. And so now the sugar's staying in the blood because it can't even get in the cell anymore because it's so, it's so stuffed. And so if you look at this, uh, it's, if you go to China, I've uh, traveled a lot, and, I mean, you have actually these guys that uh, their job is to push people to get as many people in. So the train is a cell, and it's already stuffed with sugar, okay? And outside, you're stuffing more sugar because you keep stuffing your face with sugar. <laughs> and so you're trying to get in, but it, it can't get in. Does that make sense? So now your sugar is really high. So the thing is not to add more insulin, because insulin is just going to create more problems, but to get rid of what? The sugar. The sugar or stop eating and utilize that sugar. So it's not it doesn't have to be that hard. So what's happening is unutilized sugar gets stored for a while where? In your liver. So we're seeing more non-alcoholic liver disease. Liver disease used to be a you know, fatty liver from alcohol. But now we're seeing so many fatty livers because all that excess sugar is going there. And then if it's not utilized, where does it go? To your, to your abdomen. Does that make sense? So this is where we're seeing a lot of gallbladder disease, liver disease, and then uh, obesity, of course. It's got like these ducks, I don't know if you just don't see, where they eat the liver, uh, these geese, they, they feed them like lots of like corn mash, and they try to feed them so much that they can get that fatty liver. So that's what we're doing, like this lady over here, might as well just get the corn mash and just shove it down. That's basically what's happening, guys. And so we're creating these issues <coughs> where we're getting um, obese, but then the abdominal and, and the uh, fat is what's creating the problem. You have the subcutaneous fat, but the dangerous fat is that visceral fat that's within the organs that creates that pressure on the heart because it's pushing, putting pressure, applying pressure on the abdominal aorta, and then creating the high blood pressure. But not to worry because we have a drug for that. 
that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that didn't, spark doesn't work, then there's another, then you take this spark for the rest of the life. Cholesterol is the issue. And I mean, it's not the cholesterol, guys, it's the oxidation, by the way, but all these stinking drugs that are being fed to you, and so this is where we gotta go back and look at the cause, you know, and it's just that simple. So, step number one, I mean, you would first, of course, this is like the core plan, is get rid of man food, just go back to, God food. If you're going to do this challenge and you can only do it with a core plan, do that. I don't care if you don't do the keto or whatever. Just start with a core plan. Get rid of the junk food, okay? Um, but the, the goal would be to get rid of all the white processed foods too, like the white pasta, white, you know, um, bread, white tortillas, all this kind of, um, you know, just non, I mean, just refined. This is just sugar. It's not, it's no nutrients to this. Okay, so, but we're gonna advise that you actually try to stay away from carbohydrates that are not only not refined, but the ones that spike your sugar. We call it a glycemic index <coughs> increase. Some foods are just really high. There's, a, in, you can just Google any food. You don't need, I mean, there's a lot of apps like Carb Manager, or there's like all these apps for keto. And you can just Google food, like how many grams in, of, of sugar or carbohydrates. I'm going to talk about net carbs. I'm going to carbohydrates in like berries, a cup of berries or whatever, and it'll tell you. So you want to get to the point where you're going to limit your intake per day to only about 50 grams, maybe even if you can go down to 30, for some people even 20, it just depends on the person. Of, Net carbs, and what I mean by net carbs, and, and, and I'm going to talk about what foods to eat. Is it hot in here? Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm like burning up, but I'm detoxing. So, so, um, so eat, avoid. You know, so you can have lots of people think, well, there's no vegetables. No, there's a lot of vegetables. Sometimes I just have salads with olive oil and avocado and nuts. You know, that's that could be a meal. You know what I mean? And I get stuck with this stuff, but I just love the food, the, the choices. So, um. So you're going to have like, um, we're gonna talk about like in the breakfast, you can have an omelet filled with lots of vegetable, cooked in coconut oil. You can have, you know, a chicken or a steak, whatever, if you don't have any meat, then you can do whatever, portobello mushroom uh, with a, a salad, or, you know, whatever you wanna do, but there's so many options of food. And that's why we give you the resources or go online. I mean, there's so much uh, to look at. So, but I gave you a key, and this is the one that um, we drew up for you so that you can have, uh, they, I don't like to be told what to eat. I like to just eat food and I'll go make my own. You know what I mean, that's me. But some people want like structure, like tell me, I don't, then I don't have to think more, I have to go and buy the food. So, but you do what you wanna do. These are the foods. Now, the foods here in the shopping guide that are in red, you're gonna avoid altogether. So you look up the second page, Fruits. I would just recommend fruits that are very low in glycemic index. Very easy. You don't even have to need this list. Very easy. Fruit, maybe berries and green apples. Those are the lowest on the protocol for lots of sugar. Okay? As far as vegetables, all the green vegetables. So we uh, we talk about I'll show you a diagram. So all the green vegetables are very low in sugar. Okay? You start getting into tomatoes and things like that, then we're gonna be higher in carbohydrates. So you gotta start being watched out. But that's why my salad, I love it just with greens and that's it. Don't put anything else, just the oil and avocado. Oil. Does that make sense? It keeps it easy, I don't have to think. You know? So, and then as far as the protein, we have somebody here, who, who are they? Susan, are you here? Oh, they're right here. So, so we have this family, you can stand up here. Um, so when it comes to proteins, <coughs> you got to make sure, and this is vital, guys, that you choose quality protein because anything that gets fed, like, the problem with meat is not the meat, is what the meat eats that's a problem. And what's happening nowadays with meat is that it's becoming so acidic. So it's becoming very dominant in omega-6s and very low in omega-3s. 
So you have this skew of 20 to 1 ratio instead of like a 4 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. And what's causing this is because of what they get fed, which is basically most of the time most cows or most fish, even in chickens, get genetically modified monsatan uh, corn. And so this, uh, this is destroying our animals. It's becoming very, they become very sick animals. So we have a family here that they can talk about their farm. <laughs> well, I'll start. Uh, we're um, a family who owns a farm in Emmett, about 20 miles from here, and it's called St. John's Organic Farm. And we raise organic grass finished beef. And uh, our animals have not had grain in 15 years, and they're extraordinarily healthy. And if you have healthy land and healthy grasses and healthy animals, then you'll probably have healthy. And we're, we're delighted to be cooperating with the order of creation. This is the way God made it, and this is the way animals and people are and We will do well if we will enjoy our grass and grass beef and medicines because it brings to us this uh, high level of nutrients that we need for our well being and our longevity. So, can I ask you some questions? Yeah, but I, I want to say one thing first. The fasting list uh, gave you many benefits. And I did a five day fast last spring and I'd like to add one more benefit to the list. And the benefit is insight. Because if you quiet yourself for five days, it'll give you a chance to see stressors within you. It'll probably give you a chance to see people that you need to forgive. And if you can deal with those things, you'll be much better for it. These are gifts. Amen. And yeah, that's that's why I did it initially with uh, this one spiritual insight. He gave me direction. But one of the questions I get a lot with uh, grass-fed meat is, is it all the way finished with grass? Because I think that a lot of times people always ask me that. And so... Well, the definition of grass-fed is that they've had grass at some point in their life. And, and many cows are, are raised on grass uh, for most of their life. And then they're either fed grain at the farm or typically put in a feedlot for 90 to 150 days, and you lose all the benefit of the grass. It just it just takes the uh, the grass benefit way down. So if they're not grass fed all their life, which means finished on grass, you lose the benefit. And also, I'll say grass is not grass is not grass. I mean, it matters. If they're out on sagebrush. The nutritional value of that compared to a rich pasture is way different. Um, we've had uh, uh, soil and, and, and grass uh, specialists look at our place and, and uh, with great delight. Our soils are rich and open, and we've got 35 or 40 different plant types in our pastures. These are grasses and legumes and medicinal. So our cows are eating this magnificent salad uh, sort of like what you're talking about here. It's it's really exceptional feed for them. And again, that is for a purpose. It translates to their health and ours. And they're finished. So what I did is I have a freezer and I bought like, I don't know, half a cow and I shared it with my family. And it ended up being so awesome because I just go to my garage and open up my butcher already like cut, pre-cut meat, and I just go and get it. And so um, I'm sure you brought information for something like that. I've never bought from them, but now I found somebody that's the, the person that I used to get it from. I didn't know they cut it all the way for us, so now I'm excited. So where do we find you? Well, I think we have a stack of uh, information cards with us. Uh, we're also online. Our website is stjohnsorganicfarm.com, all spelled out. Um, I think we emailed to Rosie a, a, a little YouTube video. It's a one-minute uh, introduction to us. It's, it's a visual presentation, um, but to follow soon will be something with um, some verbal uh, information. But our website is loaded with information and recipes and cooking instructions because grass-finished beef cooks a little differently. But um, there's a lot of information. Our phone number is there. St. John's Organic Farm. You can call us St. John's, John's Organic Farm. And um, we're at the Eagle Farmers Market and at the uh, seasonal market in Nampa, so you come see us. But uh, 
We do farm tours. If you have questions, we have They're also we the have farmer's answers. market, right? Which one? At the, we're at the Eagle Farmer's Market, and Thursday night um, at Flying End, there's a, a, a seasonal market that we're a part of. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. All right, so I'll give them a hand. So, um, all right, so then the line of health is, a, again, the book that we talked about that you can get some of these recipes. Now, when you look at this recipe book, uh, the ones with the arrow, and that's where the core plant recipes are the ones with the circle. But if it has an arrow like this Italian spinach soup does, the ones with an arrow are basically going to be what we call advanced plant or a ketogenic approved uh, plant. So we still want to check the, the net carbs though. And we're going to talk about that in just a bit. Uh, my Mexico book too, you can get it on Amazon, became the bestseller, yay, thank you guys for your support. Um, and so, so it basically this diet, it's gonna reduce inflammation, again, it makes you burn fat for fuel because it produces ketones. So we're gonna talk a little bit about, more about that. Um, but again, greens, it's not just meat, just gonna have lots of greens. Again, no potatoes. No carrots, no starchy greens, so just greens, okay? Lots of quality fat. What, what fat do you want to utilize? Grass-fed meat or um, wild fish, but then fat, coconut oil. Coconut oil is going to be your friend, and also your butter, but real butter. Um, and do you guys have raw milk, by the way? No? Okay. So, uh, but, you know, real butter, um, and then olive oil, avocado oil, okay? I love using lots of herbs. Turmeric, that's why I do the healing dressing. Garlic and ginger are very anti-inflammatory. So when talking about healing, we want to utilize these foods that have nutrient dense for, uh, you know, cancer killing nutrients. Like turmeric is very important. If you're gonna do anything, add more of this stuff in your in your meals, uh, which I add. So, where do I find this? I do a shop with Doc on September 3rd. I actually take you to Fred Meyer. I'm gonna show you where I find my turmeric there, where I find my ginger, where I find my, you know, coconut oil, coconut milk, all that kind of stuff. So on your sheets in the very back, you have a, um, you know, check here if you're gonna come for a shop with Doc. And I do need to know to prepare how many people uh, my husband may need to come help me and George is gonna help me as well. So. Um, but we show you how to read the labels, how to read the net carbs on all this kind of stuff. Okay, so sign up for that. What is intermittent fasting? So I want to talk about this before we talk about how you do this challenge. So intermittent fasting is just eating in a eating window. Like you choose when you're going to eat, and you try to choose at least, you know, 10th hour. To, uh, but the more the more the better. A 16 hour fast. So like for instance, you can choose to eat from 12 o'clock for lunch all the way to like seven o'clock or eight o'clock. And so you eat from that time frame and the rest of it all the way from you go to sleep all the way till 12 o'clock the next day, you're not eating. You're allowing the body to do what? To rest. So that's intermittent fasting. And you can close the gap and we're gonna talk about when we do a famine day where we only eat one meal a day, so we only eat dinner. So we're gonna talk about how that, that goes. But this is really good to help, again, in insulin sensitivity and growth hormone. When you start fasting, it starts producing that stem cells. The myths of fasting, you're gonna hang out with people that are gonna tell you you're crazy. What are you doing? You're gonna kill yourself. Those are the toxic people that you gotta get rid of. <laughs> hey, I love you, but I am gonna you know, go la, 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 la. I, because the fact is, is they're like crap. So you're gonna go and try to do something and they're gonna wanna pull you down. So you have to just love them, pray for them, and don't talk back, just like, don't even try to convince them. You do this for you. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of myths on um, fasting. You know, you can go in starvation mode, guys. That most people that uh, fasted, your body's so brilliant, it won't tap into muscle uh, burning until it does what? It utilizes all your, so unless you're anorexic and bulimic, you know what I mean? Anybody can fast, so you're not gonna starve. That's who telling you that? You know, the, the enemy. You're diabetic type one and you're an insulin user. 
I would probably tell you you have to make sure that you talk to your doctor and you're monitoring everything. I still had my sister who lived with me do that, okay? But you have to be with somebody professional. So just be careful with that. I am going to tell you the type 2 diabetics. Oh my goodness, you just tell your doctor I'm going to do this and I need you to alter my medications and they'll, you know, they can't work with them. Uh, but guess what? You're going to need to use a monitor. So we're going to tell you, you do need to get a ketone monitor and I'll tell you where to get that. Um, so fasting causes low blood sugar. Well, yeah, it's going to cause low blood sugar, but it's going to then start burning what? Fat for fuel. So your body's going to still have energy. And it's gonna to start to kick in until later. So you're still a sugar burner, you're not a fat burner. So you're gonna have some days where you're gonna hate life. You're gonna feel fatigue. You're gonna get a little, um, who, who just did the fasting here last, last week? Where, where are you, Sydney, come here. So Sydney just did this. And so tell me, like, what were your symptoms? Because whenever you fast, you have this like day three where now you've run out of sugar and you're still not a fat burner yet and you're still not, you know, so what did you feel like? I was really fatigued and I have a couple of autoimmunes which give me fatigue and it was a little different. It wasn't the sick fatigue. I knew it was just really tired, weak, like going up the stairs to do the laundry, you know, you kind of feel weak in the knees. And so they call this the keto flu, you know, and the fact is, is that this is a healthy response. Your body, again, you gotta just trust it. Oh, that's all. That, that was that was my. Any other suggestions or? What? My the one thing I found that was tremendous is I have had a lot of inflammation and a lot of pain in my joints, and um, I was able to get off the medication at least for the time being. Um, the pain, like in my joints, I didn't wake up with with severe pain and whatnot. So uh, that was tremendous. That was that made the whole thing worth it for sure. And I'll I'll do it again for sure. Yeah. So give her a hand. She okay. just did it. Yeah. <laughs> Fasting causes overeating, that as soon as you stop, you're gonna overeat. We walk you through what you're gonna do when you when you go back to refeed on the fifth week where you take five day water fast. You're going to refeed but with fermented foods, live probiotic foods, bone broth. So we're gonna walk you, you have to now get the body to remember to eat again, but it's gonna be the replenishing food. And then uh, fasting deprives the body of nutrients. Guys, the, the, the beautiful part of fasting is that you're gonna utilize just uh, just nutrient, you're gonna need to use minerals. I'm gonna tell you that when you fast, I am gonna have you either get a liquid mineral light or magnesium powder, whatever. You need minerals when you fast because when you fast, you're basically now your low sugars are gonna cause um, you to feel this way, like, like, a, like a flu, like fatigue. But that's your body is just shifting, okay? So you need the minerals. You are gonna excrete a lot of minerals when you fast, okay? So when you produce ketones. So just make sure that you're using minerals and I'll walk you through that as well. Fasting is crazy, we already told you. This is the book that I recommend you get on Amazon or go to the bookstore. Guide, um, the Complete Guide to Fasting by Dr. Jason Fung. You can also YouTube his videos. They're very encouraging on um, YouTube. He, explains it beautifully. So you always have that support of, of somebody telling you, and this is a medical doctor telling diabetics to fast, you know what I mean? That's how he heals his diabetics, by just fasting. So um, what is nutritional ketosis? We talked about that. Um, what are ketones, talk about that. So this is a keto moho, keto, K-E-T-O, M-O-J-O. -O. You can go on um, ketomoho.com and order your own unit. And basically what I love about this company is that it also includes, uh, it's one unit and you can buy the glucose strips, which are the cheap ones. The ones that are more expensive are the ketone strips. But this company, typically they're $4 with other company, the, each strip, and this company, it's only $1. So it's not that bad. And you don't have to ch check your ketones all the time. It's just certain times you wanna know, are you actually in ketosis? Now, do you need to buy this to get on this challenge? No. Okay, so if you don't want to, that's fine. You'll know when you're in ketosis, like you'll know. Like, yeah, I'm in ketosis. <laughs> Get away from me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, uh, so, um, so this is the research that's been done. What happens is with energy, when uh, these glucose, and, um, it's gonna go down, glucose is the blue, 
and the gray is the energy, and the orange is the ketones. So as the ketones rise on your meter, as your your glucose is going to dip, but that's why you don't have to worry about your glucose because your sugar, your keto, your fat's going to stabilize you. Does that make sense? And you'll feel that second win. So if you do check your ketones and you want to know if you're in ketosis, true ketosis is 1.5 to 3.5, okay? Ketoacidosis is a dangerous spot. So you're not gonna get there unless you are diabetic, maybe type one would go into that. You're gonna, it's very hard to even get into the threes, guys. So don't worry about like doing, overdoing it. And going back to um, just your food too, people when they're doing the ketogenic diet, they have so much protein. Well, you gotta also understand that you may be saying, well, I'm not on ketosis. Well, protein, if you eat too much of it in one sitting, it's gonna turn to sugar. And so it's gonna raise your glucose up. So it's like, I can never, it's, so it's only about 15 to 20 grams per meal that you're gonna have of a steak, not like a 12 ounce steak, like a three ounce or something like that. Does that make sense? So don't eat a lot of protein. Some nuts also have a lot of carbohydrates, uh, cashews. You look at that, oh, I'm not eating nuts. I don't know, but you, it's, it's not like eating a whole bag of nuts. It's like you just have like a, a handful and that's enough. So, um, all right, so the ratios again, 70, fat, 70%, 20%, carb managers can let you, but don't worry, don't, get, don't make this too hard, guys. Just start eating a ketogenic diet, okay? So don't, don't complicate it. Okay, so week number one, so what are we gonna do? So week number one, and this starts Monday, so you have until next Monday to kind of start this. The first week is pretty easy. You start a ketogenic diet, and you can eat throughout the day, no worries about how many meals or whatever, just start learning the, the food. But you're gonna add more fat, because now you want to tell the body to utilize fat. You're gonna start adding you know, two coconut um, tablespoons of coconut oil, two tablespoons of olive oil. That's why the dressing is so easy with two tablespoons, because I just put in my dressing, and um, so you can get the recipe in the book. Um, you know, you can have uh, butter, like I'll have some, do uh, you guys know what bulletproof coffee is? Uh, if you still want to have coffee, you can add some ghee butter uh, or um, actual grass-fed butter. And then you want, again, the mineral salts. So you need to add the mineral salts, about two teaspoons. That's not two teaspoons, two teaspoons. Okay, you can add it in your water. I don't like salt in my water, so I put liquid mineral white. I put like two capfuls of this throughout the day. Because you'll see, uh, as you start getting into more intermittent fasting, you'll cramp like Charlie forces because you guys, you're losing minerals. So just make sure you're having your minerals. Okay, how do I know about how many net carbs? Remember, when week one, you still have to keep it down to how many grams of carbs? 50, you know, even 30 if you can. Uh, some people 20, right, grams. So when you look at a nutritional um, ingredient list here, carbohydrates like in this thing is 17 grams. So then below it typically you'll see fiber versus sugar. So you're gonna take the, the total carbohydrates minus the fiber, and that's your total net grams of, of uh, carbs. Does that make sense? So this product per serving, again, you gotta look at per serving, so in this one would be, uh, like let's say it says uh, one cup, and you put like two or three cups, now you have to multiply, you know, times it times three. So you gotta be per serving. So that's what you gotta read. That's why I don't buy box foods. That's what I just, I eat the same thing all the time. I already know what's in chicken, what's in fish, and what's in salad, and I don't, I keep it the same. I know it may sound boring to you guys, but I don't like to think, so it keeps it simple for me, okay? So when you're, when you're doing this, your body's gonna start unloading toxins. It's gonna start to unload toxins because now you're eating different. So you gotta get rid of this. So you need binders to unload it, okay? So I recommend that with the minerals, you also start, when you start week one, you're gonna use this throughout the whole month, but IDS is the nutrients that we use to allow your liver to produce glutathione to allow your body to capture those um, toxins and then 
You have the binders like charcoal and stuff that bind it out of your system to take it out of your uh, intestines. So there's two bottles in this. Two, the G cell you take in the morning, which is two in the morning to start binding to them. And at night you take the bind, which binds these toxins and out uh, into the, the toilet. Okay, so you can get that as well. So, uh, and then there's 15% off of the supplements. Um, all right, so you also want to start this week one joining our Fasting Solution Facebook group if you are on Facebook, because uh, this is where I put weekly videos to help encourage you or ideas, okay? So starting next week, I'll just do like a weekly video where this is where we're at, and you guys can comment, ask questions there. Like if you're not a patient of ours, you can plug in, ask questions, and know what to do. So week number two. So now week number one passes, but that's not that hard. You still eat, okay? You're just adding more what? Fat. All right, week number two. So the concept here is don't eat less, eat less often. So here, we're going to limit the meals to only three. So it's the same thing, but you're going to limit to only, so no snacking in between meals. So sometimes people are so used to always snacking. So now you're training your body, don't snack. So just eat breakfast, eat lunch, and eat dinner. And sometimes people are always like, I need to eat. It's like, really? You don't need to eat. You know, but we're so used to just feeding ourselves. So the same thing, you know, make sure that you're still eating the two, 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 two. The two tablespoons of what? Coconut oil, olive oil, or butter, and the sea salt. Does that make sense? Okay. So it still hasn't gotten really hard, right? Okay, so pretty easy. And this is all in your thing. Are you guys following me? Yes. Yeah? Week three. Now the eating window starts. So here you're going to start the intermittent fasting. Week three. So now you're going to skip. And it doesn't have to just be breakfast. Let's say you just want to eat breakfast and lunch and skip dinner. That's your thing. If you have an eating window each day or seven days, okay? And so then you're going to uh, be doing that. The same thing. Now people say, should I continue working out through this journey? Yes. If you want to. You don't stop, but you still, you still do what you're going to do, okay? Um, and now week four, so what was week three again? Intermittent fasting, okay? Any questions? I'm trying to go slow, but yeah. So that's what I'm going to say. You're going to have minerals. So any other supplements, stop them. Just because too much, you, you're not eating, you're going to stop you're gonna to start to, maybe you can still take them until we, we, we reach week five, then stop your, when we do the water fast, you don't want something else. Yeah, but during this time you can still have your supplements. But you gotta start using the minerals though. Um, all right, so now eating windows here, week four, you're gonna have one day, and you see the bowl right there. This is, my, this is not in your thing, because I don't want you to follow my schedule. It's up to you when you choose what days you do this. So like here, I have Monday and Tuesday, I have the eating window, so I still eat lunch and dinner. In my scenario here, on Wednesday, I choose to just have a famine day of one meal on Wednesday. So the only thing that changes here is you have one famine day of only one meal, and the beautiful thing here is you get one day of what's called a feast day. <laughs> so the feast day doesn't mean you go have pizza at McDonald's and stuff. <laughs> Feast day just means that you're gonna go have three meals again. Okay, still on the ketogenic diet. Does that make sense? Yeah. So maybe I, if, I, if you're gonna kind of like shock the body just a little bit, is add like a yam or brown rice, like a good source of carbohydrate. The reason I tell you this, guys, is because what this does to the body is it tells the body that you're not dying and at times, like, you know what I mean? Kind of like it, it, your body will plateau. Kind of like if you're burning wood in a, in a cabin and, you know, if you have very little wood to burn and you start putting very little food, this, the fire is gonna start to dim. But you know what I mean? Some, one day you go lots of it, then it, you know what I mean? You're, you're feeding. So your body's reminded that it's not going to start. So, so we choose fasting day to be able to challenge your mitochondria to tap into fat stores and force them to use fat for energy. Okay, so it just reminds the body to use fat for energy. Um, so then week five, any questions with week four? 
So week four, we're just adding one famine day and one what? Feast day. Okay. Week five is uh, when we're going to actually do two famine days and one feast day. So now it's a five one one. Okay. So the, the four four two one. Sorry. So this is the same stuff that's going on, but now you're just adding another famine day. Okay. Now, this is when you really got to get used to the mental preparation here because week six is what? what? This is the week that I think that by this time your body has shifted more to burning fat for fuel. You did this, right? Correct. Right. You want to stand up real quick? So uh, she owns her own property, uh, tills her own. <laughs> I'm crazy. So <laughs> talk about it. Um, I had no problem. I did it for health reasons. I had a heart attack at 58, and uh, due to medications that I had been taking from my doctor, and caused me to have a heart attack. Just didn't feel good. A girlfriend invited me to come here, and I thought, eh, I can do this. Sure, I can. I had a little problem on week six. I made it through three days, called Rosie said I just grabbed a bunch of macadamia nuts and grabbed a glass of almond milk. I had the shakes uh, nauseated and she says you're in ketosis and I went score what do I do? So the helpline is there. Um, otherwise I, I intermatched it. Intermatched, uh, I can't talk it. Thank you. Fast um, all the time. I only eat two meals a day all the time. Ever and, since the then. Yeah. Now, My energy level is nuts. Talk about what you did last week. This no. lady. <laughs> anyway, she like, like does right. her whole property and carries these, like, I don't know, packs so she's gay and all this stuff. I'm like, by herself, she's, you know, single and she's doing this stuff and it's like amazes me. And she's nonstop, but she has the energy to continue to do it. So this becomes a lifestyle that you do, but you still add feast and famine days a little bit later on. But the biggest thing I want you to know is that if you reach day three and you do something like that, you didn't fail. You just get up and you walk your butt off and you go again. Like, just keep going, okay? I was telling her, you know, sometimes I'll have, like, herbal tea to kind of make it like seem like a, or a bone broth cup or something. You want to have a lot of bone broth just because it's not protein that throws you off autophagy. The point is here, you want to get the body to get into autophagy. So by day three, you're going to feel the worst. And this is why I want you to know this week, day three is going to be really hard because your body has now burnt most of its glycogen and you're kind of brain foggy. And that brain fog comes from that um, the fact that you're, you're creating lots of toxins and getting lots of healing, okay? But day four, then your body shifts and, and mitochondria shift into that fat burning zone so you start feeling better. And some people still don't feel great day four. Be okay with it, just keep going with it, okay? And that's where we say plug in the Facebook page. Did that help you guys a little bit, the Facebook, to have something to, so okay. So week seven, so now let's say you're done with uh, day five, now you wanna go eat. So then here you gotta make sure you understand you have to prepare to now, what am I gonna eat afterwards? Here you don't wanna go back to the ketogenic diet. You're gonna have like things like bone broth uh, already prepared or some fermented foods like sauerkraut, kefir um, with, uh, you know, or yogurt with no sugar, plain, you know, just stevia. So you guys know that in, I don't know, I didn't get into the sugar, but the ketogenic diet, you wanna make sure that if you are gonna sweeten things, that you're sweetening it with stevia, or monk fruit is another one that's very good. Uh, so we have tea, herbal teas or something like that. So we, we typically have herbal teas with, uh, with stevia. I love my turmeric latte. I take coconut milk and um, warm it up and put turmeric powder and ginger and uh, put uh, cinnamon. And then, you know, it's like a latte with golden milk, it's called. And then I sweeten it with stevia. Very healing. So, all right. So, week eating week is just fermented food. It says it at the same time. Still two keto meals a day as the day as the week progresses. After two days of fermented food, then you can add more keto meals. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that is that. Post fast day, day one or two. Um, you know, just make sure that you're only having again after the fast. 
very small meals. Don't go and eat a big, huge meal. Um, some people say, well, can I do this with broth, like bone broth? You can do this fast with bone broth. It's just not going to have the same effect for you. Okay, it's not that you can't. Again, there's no right and wrong with this. You can do it, you can do it with green juice, but you're not going to go into autophagy with green juice. Okay, it's a very good healing thing to do, though. Okay, so, all right, um, I'm just going to uh, end this up by again reminding you that the people who get the best results with their health is the ones that understand that this is a journey. Okay, this is not one day after another. Um, again, get your nervous system adjusted. This lady, by the way, I want to give her, uh, she still comes as a patient. She started care in 2010. Stage four cancer. Sandy, are you in here? Sometimes she pops in the classes. But uh, she actually, at stage four cancer, was told that she was going to be sent home to die. She did this in 2010. Uh, by 2011, she had lost more than 200 pounds. That's when we celebrated her. Uh, this is 2012. Uh, then 2011, 2012, and Sandy still comes here. And again, but look at her spine. Her neck, you see the posture? This way, shutting off the right force, right? We started correcting her spine, you know, getting that curve back. She saw the degeneration, but we're getting that life supply turned on. I have no doubt the first term, the second she took action, she still has a Down syndrome kid. She brings him here and gets him adjusted, and he poses with me and flexes with me. And it's just that the power of chiropractic, guys, that power that God put in there was moving the interference. So if you've never gotten a, you know, a, an exam for chiropractic, we give you the opportunity to do so. So lastly here, guys, I'm just going to show you what's next. Is you uh, sign up for the exam. Can you turn to the last page? So um, we give you that ability to get the exam, the x-rays are included, um, to get your nervous system checked. So on this last page, we're going to do a couple of raffles here in a bit. Um, you're going to put your name. So go ahead and uh, fill out your name. And you're going to tell me who referred you. Because I always like to give thanks to those persons that you were referred to. You can put your number on your email, and uh, the cell number would be better. You get a number one, tell me if you're coming to the shop with Doc. Okay, and I can't do more than start your mouth because I get in trouble at the, at the grocery store. But uh, that's why I need to know. Uh, but then we'll have more people and we'll do it in little groups. Number two, you'll be joining our, if you're going to be joining our Detox Heavy Metal on September 24th at 6.30. You may or may not know, but if you're at least interested, Put your name down, because we'll call and confirm and just remind you, hey, can you still come a week before? And then maybe you can tell us yes or no at that point. But if you're interested, put yes or no. Um, and then at the bottom, I have, would you like Dr. Rosie to talk to your church or your work? I, as a mission, love to go talk to people who don't know true health. And what I mean by true health is following the lifestyle that we teach with the mass living, removing interference. It's not the medical model that's more drugs and more surgery. So I remind people of true health. So if you have a church and you want us to go do a nutrition talk or whatever, a talk for a little organization or women's group, I'm there for free. I'll do it. Just tell me and I'll show up. I'll just set it up. You know what I mean? That's that's why I am. And I even feed them. So, so again, who doesn't like? But then I'm there to just go and teach them these kind of things. And if you want, if you're um, a non-patient um, here and you want to see what we can do to maybe help you, you put your uh, time that you can come either tomorrow, Thursday, or next Tuesday, and you circle that time, and you get the exam, the x-rays, for only $40, and then um, we set that appointment for you. And again, that $40 goes to my bike funds, because I'm going to collect 100 bikes. I don't care whether you help me or not. I'm doing it uh, with God's help. But but we want to make sure these kids at least get a chance to get a, a bite. So that's my, my goal. So that's all I have, guys. Um, uh, let's see. The last thing I'm going to end with is story, just because I love stories. But do you guys know who Cliff Young is? Nobody knows Cliff Young. Oh, this guy is amazing. This is years ago uh, in Australia where there was this um, 
run this um, basically it was like six day uh, marathon where you could get trained for this. Well, this guy shows up and his galoshes and his jumper. He he uh, would like tend to sheep and he would hurt them and. He heard that this run was going to be there in Sydney, Australia. So he shows up at the counter and says, I'm here. I'm ready to take this run. And they're like, what do you mean? There's people here that have been training for years. I don't see that you're, you're probably qualified for this. And the guy says, hey, I heard sheep all day long. I can do this. So he signs up for the race. Well, this is a six-day race, again, six day and a half. And so he, he ends up, he's running, and you know, everybody's going to take off. You know, they say go, and everybody goes, and then he's just like, they call it the, the fifth young shuffle. He just shuffles like this, and he keeps shuffling, and night comes, you know, all the racers end up going to bed like you're supposed to rest. Well, he had no idea he was supposed to rest, so he kept shuffling, you know, he kept going, and, you know, just they, they, these cameras are falling. You can look them up on Google and research it. And so it ends up that the last day of the race, you know, he was like the first to show up and it was hours before the other ones showed up. And they're like, how'd you do it? And he's like, well, I just kept running. I'm like, and then he's like, you didn't, you didn't rest? They're asking me, you didn't take a break? He's like, I didn't know I had to. So the point here, guys, if I won, and this guy's all over the news, you just, this was years ago, but, he was everywhere. And so this is the, the, the power of your mind. That the minute you limit you, you lose. Because you're in the way. But if you don't do any, so when people tell you this, are you going to die and you believe that? That's the sinking lie the enemy has that wants to destroy you. But if you remember his truth, his truth will override everything, guys. And that's what I anchor to is, what is your truth, God? What is your truth for me? What I want to do with this is I want to, like you said, use this so I can connect more to you, so I can have more. So this is not about just healing. It's about your connection above, down, inside out. And that's above, down, inside out healing that we talk with chiropractic, that, that when we say ADIO is above, down, inside out healing, that healing does not come from within, it comes from up here. So when we say, when I say above, down, inside out, power on, when I adjust you, maybe you'll get it now, why, why I say that. That healing comes from above, down, inside, and then out, and then you're able to be used for him to go heal what? Others. And that's what this is about, guys. So I hope this helps, I'm gonna pray you out, and, uh, and uh, hopefully you, know, you guys get encouraged. So dear Lord, we're just so grateful for you. We just thank you so much for just this opportunity to again just uh do this again not just for us dear lord that we need to remind ourselves that this is to seek you more and uh have that time to to know you you say be still and know i am god and we want to do that and uh, use this time for that um we pray for all these people encourage them um in the name of jesus get rid of whatever temptations that come at us that the enemy wants to destroy and uh, take that out of their their life and, and their bodies and everything that is aligned to just take them from from your health and uh, we just give this all to you thank you guys raffles